over there, there's a campaign plan. We're following a plan. And last year, we were basically kicking the Taliban out of a lot of areas in the South that they previously controlled. And sometimes it was very heavy fighting. That image hasn't always been conveyed. There were times where we knew Taliban infiltration was strong in a given area, and we used line charges to just obliterate the area they were in because we didn't want our troops walking on all the landmines. I mean, there was some heavy fighting. And that was the story of 2009, 2010. And now we, meaning the Afghan government and NATO, control a lot of these areas. Does that mean that we've, a, we, we're now positioned to prevent all violence? Of course not. We've all seen the assassination campaigns. Uh, there's still a lot of tragic violence, but there are no big sanctuaries for the Taliban in southern Afghanistan anymore. And the question is, how well will they be able to do at counterattacking now that they have to basically use sanctuaries over in Pakistan or hundreds of miles away in the eastern parts of Afghanistan in order to mount their attacks on places like Kandahar and Helmand? So that was the sort of you know, fraught moment that people were anticipating because that spring offensive typically begins about when I was leaving in mid-May when the poppy harvest is complete. So the next few weeks will be very indicative of just how well the Taliban is able to function now that they do not have these weapons caches, these so-called rat lines where they can move their equipment and people, um, and also just big areas of land they control. Well, the drawdown, uh, apparently, from what we're hearing during Secretary Gates' uh, visit in Afghanistan, has not yet been determined in any detail. And General Petraeus, who's expected back in town fairly soon for confirmation hearings, may simply wait until he sees the president face to face to discuss the options that he's been developing that he has publicly said would be seen by no more than a few people um, you know, in the, in the development stage before he's able to share them with the president directly. And I think that's probably going to happen in the course of June. And also people will be watching what's going on in the battlefield to determine whether uh, the spring offensive is big and how much that tells us about how much we've weakened the enemy. Now, in terms of, uh, in terms of the drawdown, you could debate whether we should accelerate the drawdown if the enemy is weak or, by contrast, feel vindicated that our strategy is basically correct and therefore stick it out with almost the current number of troops for another year. And interestingly, it's not obvious. Does good news mean that you leave or good news mean that you stay? Two thousand fourteen is the formal date for transition of full lead responsibility nationwide to the Afghan government. That's according to current plans by NATO and by the Afghan government. And yes, that's more than three years, well, two and a half to three and a half years away. And I wouldn't be surprised if it went up till the end of 2014. Uh, and so it's entirely possible that we could be watching this process unfold for quite some time. Uh, the basic point there is that even after 2014, NATO may still need to keep, let's say, a few thousand or 10 to 20,000 troops to help with special operations, to help with logistics, air power, intelligence, some of the specialized things the Afghans may be slower uh, to develop themselves. But the good news is that in 2010 and early 2011, the kind of stories I was told, the kind of statistics I was shown were that the Afghans are now providing about half of all real fighting capability, uh, really equaling NATO's role in most of these major campaigns. Are they as good as we are? Of course not. Are they as well equipped? Of course not. But do they know their own country better than we do? Yes. And are they willing to fight for their country when in uniform? Yes.